This is an extremely important issue that is of great importance far beyond the person of Julian Assange. I think this case has, uh, although obviously every uh, case like this has a personal aspect, and I'm sure that uh, it also uh, Stella Morris afterwards will speak to that as well. But uh, I think we all have to be, uh, to try to focus on the overall importance of this case. Myself, I was contacted by uh, Julian Assange's lawyers in December, 2018. He was still at the Ecuadorian embassy and they asked me to intervene on his behalf and said that his uh, living conditions at the embassy amounted to cruel and human and degrading treatment. And I had this visceral reaction of, uh, I'm not going to be manipulated by this narcissist and rapist and hacker and so on. And <laughs> to my shame, I, I didn't know anything about this case, but somehow I emotionally felt I knew everything about Julian Assange. And I'm telling you this because it led me to not get engaged in the case for three months until his lawyers came back and said, we have rumors that his expulsion from the embassy is imminent. Could you please look into the case? And they sent me some, some medical expertise and opinions of independent medical experts that had visited him and some other materials. And only once I started to look in the, those pieces of evidence, I realized that there really wasn't um, any facts to back up this narrative that I had had in my own mind. So I'm telling you all of this because I think that's the most important obstacle to having a clear 2020 vision, even before 2021 this year, uh, on, this, on this case is that we're always looking at Julian Assange and because most of us don't know him personally, we're looking at a persona that has been created uh, of him or for him or in his place uh, mainly uh, in, in various media uh, platforms and so on over the last 10 years. And I can assure you, I've investigated this case for two years, there is nothing to back up um, this, this narrative. Um, so I, I obviously I could speak here in very much detail to all aspects of the investigation, but I propose that I will then answer two questions if, if people want to know more specifically about specific aspects. But uh, I'd like to focus on the state side of this, because we're talking about a persecution. And when someone is being prosecuted, we always look at the person. We're not looking at the prosecuting side. And I'm arguing that what's being done here is a prosecution that is not pursuing law and justice, but is pursuing political purposes. And therefore, it is a persecution. It is not a prosecution. And the, all of this hinges on the good faith of the prosecuting states. And here I'm talking not only about the, the, the US, I'm also speaking of the UK, I'm speaking of Sweden, I'm speaking of Ecuador. Um, and in all of those four cases, uh, states, in every single proceeding that had been led against uh, Julian Assange or involving him, his procedural rights, I can assert that as an international lawyer, have been systematically violated in each stage of each proceeding in each jurisdiction. And we're talking about a person, as we know, who has exposed evidence for war crimes. None of these crimes has ever been prosecuted. Already that disproves the good faith of those authorities, because clearly those war crimes are much more serious than what Julian Assange could ever conceivably have been committed. None of this is being prosecuted, but he is being persecuted. He's not even a whistleblower who's had a duty of, of allegiance or of secrecy. He's a publicist, a journalist who has published evidence for serious crimes. Now, we can see, as I said, in the Swedish pr proceedings, clear violations of his procedural rights. I can speak to that in detail if you'd like. Ecuador has expelled him from the embassy without any due process, has taken his, state, his statehood away, his, uh, no, his statehood, his citizenship away uh, without any due process. In the UK proceeding, unfortunately, to my shock, and I'm a professor at the British University myself. Oh, shit, not, not Iraqi Democrat, not Iraqi. I could see how his um, um, rights have been systematically violated. In the US, uh, Julian Assange would not expect a fair trial either. Um, the good faith of those states is also disproven by the, the way in which they engage with my mandate. I'm mandated by states to report to states about their compliance with their obligations under the Convention Against Torture. And by, when I reported to those four states that I had identified serious violations 
of human rights law in this case, and that I asked for an investigation and for them to cooperate with my investigation, they refused to engage in a constructive dialogue altogether. And even my follow-up letters, my reports to the General Assembly in New York, my reports to the Human Rights Council in Geneva, nothing was able to uh, achieve a, uh, a, a conduct by these states that would have uh, been compliant with their human rights obligations. I'm not saying that they needed necessarily to agree with my findings that Julian Assange had been exposed to psychological torture, but by treaty law, they're obliged to conduct a prompt and impartial investigation under the Convention Against Torture as soon as they have reasonable uh, 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 evidence to, to believe that the act of torture could have been committed. And for that, it is sufficient that my mandate makes those, transmits those allegations. I didn't take those allegations somewhere from the press uh, uh, or obscure sources. I actually wanted to avoid any kind of politicization and went to visit Julian Assange in prison in May 2019, just after his arrest, together with two very experienced uh, experts, medical experts, uh, specialized in examining victims of torture. And they have worked in this for about 30 years. They have uh, examined victims in the Balkan Wars and the Middle East. I mean, they. They have no reason to seek publicity. You will have noticed in the last two years, they have never appeared in the press. Um, so they're not you know, scandal seeking kind of uh, people. They're very experienced uh, independent medical experts. Both of them uh, and myself, we all came to the conclusion that Julian Assange showed the symptoms that are typical for uh, victims of psychological torture. And here we're talking about ill treatment that is uh, uh, comparable to a type of mobbing. Uh, that we would know from our private lives or, you know, that everyone would be familiar with. Uh, it's a very common method of psychological torture because it doesn't leave physical traces, but is extremely destructive to the human mind and emotional stability in the long term. And it, it, it has several components. It, it always includes a form of isolation, social isolation or physical isolation. In Julian Assange's case, we progressively have both of those uh, aspects. Then there is a threat scenario that is there, that something bad could happen at any moment. And, and here we have the extradition to the US. And I mean, all human rights organizations agree that the conditions of detention for uh, political detainees or uh, let's say national security detainees in the US uh, amount to inhumane and, and cruel treatment. And, and so we have the isolation of the threat scenario. We have the, 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 the constant arbitrariness of official behavior and here we're talking to his constant violations of his procedural rights. He doesn't get access to his lawyers. He doesn't get access to his very basic rights as a defendant just to prepare his, his defense. He doesn't get access to his legal files. Um, and, 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 and so on top of this, we have this campaign of defamation where he is constantly being humiliate, humiliated and ridiculed, but he can't answer to those accusations in a way that protects his human rights. All of these elements you will find in a mobbing context. And we know that mobbing can lead people to commit suicide. It's a very serious form of abuse, although it doesn't leave immediate physical traces. So all of this I reported to those states uh, and, and it has been confirmed by other independent medical doctors. We've had hundreds of doctors intervening internationally uh, uh, with the British government. We've had the uh, European Parliament uh, uh, passing resolutions. We've had the International Bar Association uh, protesting officially against uh, the, uh, the, the unfair trial that Julian Assange is getting. We've had Inter Amnesty International speaking out against his extradition. Even New York Times, The Guardian, uh, who have been critical to some aspects of WikiLeaks work in, in the past, have very clearly spoken out against uh, the uh, unjust treatment of, of Julian Assange. The Working Group on Arbitrary Attention, uh, Detention of the United Nations years ago has decided that his uh, confinement in the embassy is arbitrary. Uh, I have investigated this case. I have no personal stakes in this case. And I was even biased, I admit it to my shame, biased against Julian Assange in the beginning. But when once I looked at the fact, it was clear that this is not a prosecution, it is a persecution. Now, let us not, and I will close on this last aspect, um, let us not be misled by the seemingly positive uh, uh, result of the, uh, the judgment of 4th of January, which refuses extradition, 
um, uh, based on medical grounds. Uh, it's, a, it's a slightly or even strongly misleading judgment because first, the judgment goes all the way to confirm the US uh, indictment for espionage, which basically sets a precedent case that uh, what Julian Assange has done, which is investigative journalism, is a crime under the Espionage Act. And not only that, but also under the British Official Secrets Act. So it also really concerns every single British citizen. Uh, they could be criminalized for exposing uh, uh, dirty secrets, if you allow me that term, uh, of, of the government. Um, and, and so they confirmed that narrative. They, they, contrary to the will of British Parliament, they, the, the judge said that the, uh, the exception for political offenses, as, so the prohibition of extraditions for political offenses did not apply, although it is expressly in the treaty between the UK and the US. Um, and, and, and so they confirmed this whole precedent case and in the end didn't extradite him, not yet at least, for medical reasons, because the, uh, the prison conditions in the US would be oppressive to uh, uh, in, in view of the mental health of Julian Assange. Now that's a, a, a little bit of a trap because in the appeals case now, obviously the only question the US will appeal is that precise question on whether their the conditions of detention are inhumane and whether they're uh, uh, acceptable uh, to, uh, to, to Julian Assange. And so now here they can make diplomatic assurances with regard to those conditions and thereby remove that obstacle fairly easily. And the whole appeals proceeding has now been reduced to that discussion. We're no longer discussing political offense. We're no longer discussing press freedom. We're no longer discussing war crimes. We're only discussing uh, those uh, assurances and they can easily be given by the US. And afterwards, as we know, those assurances are not always uh, respected in practice. So I think it's more of a maneuver to reduce and focus the appeals proceeding to something that's beneficial to the US, then that this is really about a, uh, an expression of, of consideration of humanity uh, on behalf of, of Julian Assange. And I can even prove that with a, 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 a final point. Um, if the judge considers that solitary confinement in the US is inhumane and oppressive and would lead uh, Julian Assange to commit suicide, then why does she send Julian Assange back to solitary confinement in the UK? where there is no need and no, uh, no uh, legal basis to keep him in solitary confinement. He's not serving a sentence. He is only being kept uh, there in confinement to uh, assure his presence in case he should be extradited. So it's a preventative detention so he doesn't escape. But you don't need solitary confinement in Belmarsh for that. Uh, where lawyers don't have access, family doesn't have access, where he can't exercise his profession, he should be now in a, a house arrest context, such as has been given to Augusto Pinochet. When he was in extradition detention, uh, uh, he was held in a villa in house arrest and had all other liberties uh, save for he couldn't leave the UK. And that's the only uh, legitimate purpose for restricting Julian Assange's uh, uh, purpose if ever we should consider that extradition proceeding legitimate in the first place. But if we do that, then he could at the most be lawfully kept in house arrest. So the fact that he's being kept in an expensive solitary confinement uh, arrangement in uh, Belmarsh uh, uh, it proves that the authorities have other things in mind than just assure his presence for that trial.